on Power Talk AM 1460 and FM 101.1. Streaming worldwide on iHeartRadio. Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show. You're listening to The Jam Price Show, and today my guest is Paul Scanlon, who is the co-founder and CEO of Legion M. Welcome to the show, Paul. Oh, thank you, Jan. Nice to be here. Great to have you on the show. We met in uh, at the Sundance Film Festival and had a wonderful long conversation, and I knew after talking with you then that I definitely wanted to have you on the show. Uh, yep, out in the sun on the Legion M balcony overlooking the iconic Egyptian uh, movie theater sign, right? It was a perfect a afternoon. It really was. And some of the, you know, the, the the movie festival was sort of slowing down a little bit. So we had a nice relaxing afternoon. So it was really lovely. It really was. So let's talk a little, because our listeners are probably not familiar with Legion M, maybe some are, but let's talk a little bit about Legion M, what you do and how you co-founded it, this with, uh, with your co-founder, Jeff. Talk a little bit about him. Sure. Also. Absolutely. So, well, Jeff and I go back for 20 years, we've been working together and and uh, we, we, our earliest uh, startup was a company called Moby TV, which was one of the early streaming pines. And uh, that company is still going today. I'm on the board of it. Jeff and I are large shareholders. And it's, uh, it was, I mean, it was literally one of the first to put TV on phones and tablets. And today it's powering complete, you know, cable systems. Um, but so Jeff and I, you know, we, we work well together and uh, we, we like to pioneer kind of new space with creative ideas and um, Legion M was something that we had been kind of discussing for several years uh, dating back to when um, the SEC was uh, had proposed to change the securities laws and what the SEC did uh, via uh, an act that went through Congress called the Jobs Act was they opened up startup investing to everyone uh, many people don't realize that up until 2016 uh, if you wanted to invest in a startup even if it was your best friend or your brothers startup, you would uh, have to meet the definition of an accredited investor. Uh, and that meant that you already had a million dollars in net assets, not including your home, or you made over $250,000 a year. Everybody else had to wait for those companies to go public. And, you know, in an economy that's dominated by startup growth, <clears throat> it became abundantly clear to Congress and to, you know, the population at, at large that that was kind of an unfair advantage that, you know, the rich people, the wealthiest uh, people in our country, country had over the sort of average investor. And so in 2016, these rules were rolled out. And uh, Jeff and I were, uh, we had already announced our company to create what we call the world's first fan owned entertainment company. And what that means is we are literally uniting entertainment fans, people that go to Sundance or go to Comic Con or active and enthusiastic about entertainment. They watch all the episodes of, you know, an HBO series, and they go to the movies on the weekends and we're uniting that that community to co-own our own entertainment company now why did you decide on all of the things that you could have chosen why did you decide movies yeah so it's a great question i mean so for us you know we we really felt like this jobs act was created a once in a lifetime opportunity to to disrupt some industries. And, you know, one of the things that we realized is having been like Moby TV was a technology company that ended up becoming a media company and kind of straddled the technology and media uh, industries together. And one of the things that we realized just being passionate entertainment fans ourselves is that there's no other industry where the consumers are as passionate about the product as they are. I mean, maybe music is a, is another one in gaming, but in entertainment in general, you know, movies and TV series, um, the idea of uniting the consumers of that content to co-own a company. And one of the things about Legion M that I think is really interesting, like our motto is having fun can be good business. And so what I mean by that. <laughs> yeah. So what I mean by that is our 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 community, they're coming together. Uh, and by the way, we you know, we don't ask anyone to put their life savings in. In fact, we warn everyone not to invest more than they can afford to lose because statistically we're a startup and we're in the entertainment space. Both of those have, you know, very high risk profiles. Um, but what we believe is that if we're successful, we can create, you know, outsized returns and we can also have a great time doing it. So our community 
is having like by investing in Legion M, they're also going to Sundance and they're coming to red carpet premieres. They're we're we're doing what we call opening the gates to Hollywood. So they're getting to participate in an industry that they love and to be a part of it. We have people that have been on set, we have people that have been in our films. Everybody gets to um, submit their their photo for our animated credit is a photo mosaic of all of our investment that goes up on the big screen in front of our movie. How fun. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so wh- then how did you, when you, you we both launched our, our companies at the same time. I launched my show the, the same time that you launched Legion M in 2016. I think even and the same month. And it took us four years to find each other. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good things are worth waiting for, <laughs> as, they right, say, right. as they say. So when you launched this, how did you go about finding investors? What was the way that you promoted uh, what you were doing out there to the general population so people could look at and decide whether they want to invest in Legion M or not? Yeah, it's a great it's a great question. And, you know, very early on, like um, even before these new rules were enabled by the SEC, we had kind of um, announced our company. And what we did is we went out and we kind of joined forces with people in the industry that um, that believed in our kind of model. You know, whenever you're an entrepreneur and you're pioneering a new space and you're telling people about your idea, inevitably you'll find people that like really latch on and resonate with your idea. And before it's proven, you also get a lot of nates. And so we were able to um, create some allies. So we, we founded the company with uh, Stupid Buddy Studios, Seth Green and, and his company and Tim League, the founder of Alamo uh, Draft House. Uh, we also had uh, very strong endorsement and support from Stan Lee, uh, who really, really loved the idea of uh, a fan-owned entertainment company. In fact, Stan was quoted in the LA Times as saying that he liked the idea so much, his only regret was that he didn't think of it. <laughs> and so Stan was kind of a, uh, you know, an honorary kind of team member. Um, and we, we did a lot with Stan uh, in, in those last years of uh, of his life, including uh, set, immortalizing him in um, cement at the uh, Chinese theater. So that was something that Legion M united fans to do. Um, and but to finish answering your question, we you know we we put it out there and we put it out there through Facebook. We went to we launched at Silicon Valley Comic Con and we just asked the world like, do you believe in a fan owned entertainment company? And in the early days, it was really that was the hardest part because it was really just me and Jeff and our small team and we were really just making our promises of what we wanted to do. But the reality is that if you fast forward four years, if you think four years ago, would we have promised Promise that we would have done everything that we have done in the four years that we've been in business. You know, I think if we had made that promise, most people would have said, oh, there's no way they'll possibly, you know, create that many special events and that much momentum and that much, um, you know, uh, headlines and everything else. And so we look back at it and we're really proud of where we are, like and what we demonstrated. And, you know, the truth is that the way Legion M grows, it kind of grows like a snowball. So we're, you know, we're approaching 30,000 investors now, uh, which is, you know, a pretty substantial community. And we kind of grow like a commu- like a snowball. The bigger we get, the faster we grow. We've had exponential growth year over year, where we double every year. And we've been uh, increasingly, you know, offering more and more opportunities. Like you'll remember at Sundance this year, uh, we had our Film Scout app. Yes. And the Film Scout app allows our community to vote on and play this game which is like fantasy sports for film nerds where they get to have a voice and what films at Sundance really resonate with them. Um, but that all that data makes us smarter about the, the decisions we're, we're making. And so we are, we're papering a deal right now where we're, we're partnering on, there'll be at least one movie and probably two movies coming out of Sundance that Legion M will get involved with. We will back and we will help release. <laughs> I was going to ask you because when we met, you were, you know, you were evaluating and you had to go through your process. Can you talk about what those movies are, or is it too soon? Well, we haven't announced them yet, but but I can I can share that um, you know Film Scout was a like an unfettered success again this year. So we did it last year, and we bought a movie called Memory: The Origins of Aliens. We released that movie, and it was a great experience. And um, this year, we had more than twice the number of votes on the platform. We also went even deeper into analyzing the data. 
And it's really fascinating when, when you think about it, because we have the data that tells us of the 100 movies at Sundance, what are the movies that, because people could participate from anywhere on the planet, so they didn't have to be at Sundance. So there are two parts of it. We know of all the movies that were, were listed at Sundance and described and with the cast and talent, which of those movies resonated the most with which gender and demographic and all that detail. But then we also have data on the, you know, Legion M probably had, I think we looked at close to a thousand people at Sundance this year that are affiliated or related to Legion M. Wow. And they're watching movies and then writing detailed reviews. So we have reviews on every single movie, like written reviews in the in the Film Scout platform from audience members that went and saw that movie. Excellent. That's really valuable yes. data when you think about it. Yes. And so, so getting back to the whole motto of having fun can be good business, you can obviously see how valuable that data is. But most of the big distributors are buying these movies, paying you know millions of dollars for them based on a few people's opinion. You know, they might have three or four people there. They don't even get to see all the movies. They have to, you know, make their selections and go see those movies and then make a quick gut instinct. You know, what do they think? <clears throat> what do they think critics will think? What do they think the audience will think, etc. So we've got this data. But the way we're getting this data is by our community doing something they love to do. The whole idea of going to Sundance that sounds like fun. The idea of going to Sundance as a co-owner of a company that's going to buy or acquire a movie or two movies at Sundance that has a lounge on Main Street where they meet other investors and talk about movies, write reviews, play the Film Scout game, that like takes their Sundance experience to a whole new level. Yes. This is like more fun than it's, they could have ever imagined. But that their exercise of having fun and doing that is building value in the company they own. And so we're much smarter. We've got distributors all wanting to work with us because not only are we better at, hopefully, fingers crossed, better can we prove that we're better at picking movies. But once we pick a movie, then we know that we've got a community of people that will help make that project a success. Excellent, excellent idea. <laughs> Great concept. Yeah. And a lot, you're right. It's a lot of fun. I mean, I, I can imagine for all of your investors how much fun that is to, you know, be a part of that whole process. So that happens at Sundance when you do the scanning. How about outside of Sundance? How are yeah. you choosing the films and how are your investors involved? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we do multiple different things. So we have uh, we have something part of our platform called Impulse, where we will take projects in our development slate, ideas that we have, we'll put that out to our community and let them vote on it. We also on occasion will open up our um, development slate for submissions from from our community. In fact, some of the some of the coolest projects that we have on our slate actually came from our community. Um, but then, so the way it works is our community doesn't like when they vote they don't we don't put two projects side by side and let them kind of vote on it and share all the financial details and things like that because that would be confidential and create a lot of controversy in in the business people wouldn't want their projects you know posted that way but we do we do put them out like we'll put out a question we ended up um investing in and helping to uh to bring uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot uh, back with Kevin Smith. And the reason we were able to do that is because we asked our community if we could work with any director in Hollywood, you know, who would that be? And we pre-populated that with some names, but we also let them write in names and then vote up. And so Kevin Smith was, you know, regularly at the top of that list, like, you know, in the top three or five, you know, candidates. And we also had a relationship with him. So we asked him, you know, look, are you working on any project? And he was like, oh, my God, I'd love to work with you guys on a project. This is something I want to do. And so we we worked with him to do it. And it was a great, like, it's just a fantastic experience because we were able to work with the director that our community wanted to work with. We brought people to the set. Kevin ended up surprising uh, the set visit people with a walk-on role. So they're in the movie. We were able to be, be a part of not just the production of that movie and making it happen, but also in, in the sort of distribution and the release of the movie. Kevin had a tour that we, we helped put together. We ended up selling out that tour. I mean, there, it, it's broken box office record. Uh, and there was an article about this um, soon after we had uh, released where, we, you know, Kevin has a great fan base, but also Legion M's ability to kind of move the needle 
we sold out that tour months before it was it was released and he ended up we ended up doubling the size of the tour so the you know the financial sort of uh you know roi on, on our investment has been phenomenal the emotional roi has been even greater because so many of our community not only got to like go see this new movie but they were a part of making it happen and kevin's thanking them and meeting them and we god we i think we brought like 50 people to the red carpet premiere and they all went to the after party and got to meet kevin you know these are just experiences that like are are once in a lifetime it, it, you're right it's very 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 exciting well very exciting what you're doing if you're just tuning in you're listening to the jam Price show all about movies. And my guest today is Paul Scanlon, who is the co-founder and CEO of Legion M. I've, I wanted to ask you, how did the name Legion M come about? What is the significance of it? Oh, it's a great question. Well, so, you know, we wanted something that, that kind of represented a, like a community and almost a community that united to do something. And Legion really made a lot of sense. And um, we're also built into our name is our long-term objective which is to unite one million entertainment fans and then take over Hollywood. And so the, the M in our name has a bar over it, which is the Roman numeral for one million. And so people within the Legion, most of them understand and know that we are Legion M with a bar over it, which is one million. And that, that kind of embodies our long-term objective. I now now it makes sense. I well, I have often, often <laughs> thought well, Legion M. How did they come up with that name? So uh, well, and if you think about it, so and and one one of the reasons why we want to sort of illustrate like what what does it mean to have a million people in your community? So for us, the average investor today puts four to five hundred dollars in. So the minimum investment's a hundred dollars today. Um, the average is like four to five hundred dollars. By the way, we do not require you to invest to be a part of legion m so you can join for free but if at the point where we have raised where we have united a million investors we'll have raised four to five hundred million dollars to invest in projects that have a million people emotionally and financially invested in them so we have twenty five thousand, almost thirty thousand today and we know what that's worth so when we back a project we know what that's worth in box office when we get behind a comic book for example we know that we can create the most we broke a record on Kickstarter when we introduced our first comic book. And that was when we were half the size we are today. So we know that this community has a force and is a force to reckon it, reckon with already at, at less than 30,000 investors. So can you imagine what it's going to be like at a million? I mean, we truly believe that it will, you know, and one of, one of the things that Legion M represents, we have a purpose in life. Like we're not, like we do want to have fun and we want to use that fun to create business results and our ROI for our investors. But our purpose is to add, to have a positive impact on an industry that we love. So we're here to disrupt Hollywood, but not in a bad way, in a positive. We want to create new franchises. We'll, we'll, we, we're not against repurposing existing franchises. We, you know, we love getting involved in the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, especially because it was making fun of sequels and reboot. Uh, and it was a sequel and a reboot at the same time. <laughs> um, so it's very uh, meta there. But but we want to be able to introduce new content to the space. So we have we optioned a book recently uh, called Emperor's Blades that we're developing into a television series. Uh, and when we did that, we didn't just like that wasn't just something that happened and our community will read about it. That's something that our community, they're reading that book. We have signed books for sale that they can buy. <clears throat> and when we develop it, they're involved in that development process where we, we bring them in. We do online development meetings where the, the creators and the directors will, you know, ask for advice. We recently did this with our Girl With No Name uh, feature film that we're developing. This is the one where uh, we introduced a comic book, which is really kind of like a book of the storyboards for the film. And we work with Tanya, the director, to introduce that comic book. Ended up breaking records on Kickstarter. Uh, but now Tanya has been hosting these online, well, we host them, but with Tanya, where, you know, we're looking to the Legion to give casting ideas ideas uh, and they can suggest songs for the soundtrack tanya makes the final decision she's the director we're all backing her vision but she knows that sourcing ideas and 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 songs 
and casting ideas from a wide group of people makes her a better director. It's it's really really a, such a fascinating uh, concept, Paul. And I can you know hear the passion in your voice and when we met too about how much you love this. Are are you are you? I know you um, you just mentioned this book. Is that Evermore? Is that the well, we have Evermore out there. It's also being developed into a TV series, and then uh, the one I was referring to is Emperor's Blades. Emperor Blade. Okay, Stables. I didn't know if you had Emperor's changed Blades, the name. Yeah. Okay, Emperor's Blade. So Evermore, you're doing a table read, and you're asking for people if they want to get involved with the casting in that one. Yeah, that's kind well, of I mean, fun. So, so yeah, if you think about it, so when you're evaluating a script, and you want to make sure that the dialogue feels natural and that everything kind of works. The best way to do that is with the table read, right? And right. so we could do that table read with our our community and bring in higher actors to do it. Or we could let our community participate. And so we put it out to our community and we'll host the table read and we'll let anyone to uh, can tune in and watch it and give feedback on it, but also if you want to um, audition to be one of the one of the cast reading, it's just a better way to develop the project, we believe this, and it's also a really cool and engaging way for our community to get involved. I have, I have one other example. I know we're probably going to run out of time, but this is one of my favorites. So we just finished shooting um, a film that's in post-production now called Arch Enemy. This is a movie that we're producing uh, with um, the uh, SpectraVision team starring Joe Manganiello. It's a gritty, noir superhero movie. Like It's not like a, a Marvel or DC comic superhero movie it's more like uh more like the joker kind of it's a it's kind of a uh a gritty action you know it's got some action in it um anyway joe manginello plays the hero and so working that the director on that project is a guy named adam egypt mortimer who we believe has a kind of really uh he's an up-and-coming director and has like a really cool style and and vision to his films and we're really excited about this project so what we did is we said to adam Look, as you go into before you even start, you know, filming or doing uh, getting, you know, going on the film, what are some of the things that you're going to need that we would have to pay for or maybe are complicated or you need multiple people to help you out with? And we got a list of production needs and we said we can't guarantee, but we'd like to take that production need put it out to our community and let them respond. If they have a drone, for example, or if they are right, a drone right. operator, or if they do this or that or whatever, and just give them a chance to bid on it or to, to pitch themselves. But one of the things that we put out there, this is my favorite one, is Adam said, look, we're going to have to buy or rent a car to be the hero's car. And we're going to break the windshield, but we'll pay to get it fixed. We'll have to pay to get it fixed. But if anyone out there wants their car to be the hero car, let's let them nominate their car. So we created this web page where people could, you know, write, write in their name and submit a picture of their car. And then that created like a page for Adam to look at. And, we, and Adam knew ultimately if he didn't see a car he liked, he could just go do the traditional route. But we had hundreds of cars <laughs> submitted, right? Like How cars fun. from all over the country. People are willing to drive their car to set from Florida, wow. for crying out loud, to be in the movie. Mm -hmm. Adam looks through all these cars. He ends up choosing a really, really interesting, cool car. Like a totally different car than he would have, than he had even spec in the script. And now, and that was from one of our investors. So that that his car, his car is the hero it's, car in the it's movie. Now in the movie, how exciting! I hate and to cut you like off. Lost his mind. Yeah, no, it's so fun. <laughs> it is. I mean, we could go on and on and on. I'm gonna have to have. I'm definitely gonna have you back on the show. And definitely, when the movie starts com comes out, we want to have the uh, director or and, and filmmakers oh, yeah, involved no, and could, have them on the show. Totally, set that up. totally yeah, promote the movies that you're promoting because that's what the show is all about. Well, Paul, it's been such a joy and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Likewise. Thank you, Jan, for having us on. You're very welcome. Thank you. You can listen to the Jan Price Show all about movies anywhere, anytime on the iHeart Podcast Network, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and on your smart TV. Also go to thejampriceshow.com to listen to archive shows and the Price Movie Minute movie reviews. Thank you for listening. On Power Talk AM 1460 and FM 101.1, streaming worldwide on iHeartRadio, Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show.